Okay. But in the skirmish, Taran is able to do so much damage that the enemy cannot get any flying units. Oh my god. So you have an actual scenario where where the enemy can no longer kill the Terran building and the Terran building has no has no impetus to fly back to to get shot down. So wait, the game actually has to end on a stalemate or Yes. There is a stalemate con okay, so so here's the other thing. Um, there's an inbuilt stalemate condition and what this does is that okay let me see if I remember this correctly. If nobody is mining, if neither player is mining for, I think it's, I think it's two minutes or something. I don't remember the specific timings. The game will initiate a warning for stalemate, which means that if if no buildings are killed, if no minerals are mined in the next like one minute, the game will automatically go into stalemate. The game ends in the draw. The game will go into stalemate. Stalemate is an actual game mode. Like, it's something that happens. It's not yes. just the game crashing. No. There's an inbuilt stalemate. The reason being is that in StarCraft 1, there wasn't. And in StarCraft 1, Terran buildings also fly. So in that case, in pro games, you would have to like get an admin to kind of decide whether it's, it's like allowed to be a stalemate. I see. Okay, so the enemy I think has gone for an enemy nexus, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, okay, then they're going to expand, so I will expand first, and then I'll get myself a cyber core, and then get myself an adept. Oh. Okay, so here's the thing, okay, so now to, now to talk a little bit about air toss. <coughs> okay, so here's the thing about air toss. You can't go full air toss. Um, you can't just work purely off um, air toss units because you still need some sort of ground army. Okay, the enemy took an expansion, which is good because that gives me time to back go up and do what I want to do. I see many people putting um, pylons behind their base. What's the rationale on that? Oh, okay. The reason you do this is twofold. Uh, the most important reason is that do you know how often harassment comes in via against the middle lines? What the? Oh snap, okay, I'm supply blocked. Okay, that was a bad miss rally. Okay, one reason is because you know how often people try and harass via the middle lines? Uh huh, super. Yeah, so you want a. You want to be able to warp it there quickly. Oh, I see. Another reason is that if you have uh, pylons in the middle line, you can build cannons, you can build shield batteries. This is to mitigate the effects of like drops and stuff, even when you, even if you don't have units there. Remember Lobo versus Dark Void, the one with the Raven that killed like a lot of workers. Oh yeah. Yeah, one cannon, one cannon in the middle line. That's all it would have taken. But you need a pylon there to begin with. That's true. Yeah. I see you have four workers in one assimilator. Oh yeah, that's a mistake. The the tricky thing about gas, okay, it's a little bit of an excuse, but the tricky thing about gas is I'd rather have four workers on an assimilator than two because of how important gas is. Okay, so the first thing so, I'm gonna so it's so you still have more gas when you're mining four out of no. four rather than three? No. But the so number of... you can never overload. No, you can't. Ah, shit. D -d 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 need a micro this adept. Whoa, they have a cannon. Okay, that's a fairly competent enemy. Wow. Okay, that was careless. Okay, they've got a cannon, so that changes my plan slightly. Okay, so here's the thing. I am still getting gateways, even though I'm going for an air build, simply because... Oh, bits are too strong. Well, here's the thing. Even if I make a lot of air units and the enemy like walks across the map in a minute, I will still die. So here's what an oracle does. Yep, not touching anything, not pressing anything. And when the enemy army comes, I am out of here. So you just leave it to attack and do nothing. Yeah. Oh shit. That idiot should have left. 
Okay, so here's the thing. Normally when you're playing online or against uh, real humans, the enemy tends to have defenses in place. They tend to react better. <laughs> By the way, I'm gonna... Just as an example, I'm gonna put um, shield batteries in my middle lines. And I'm then gonna start massing phoenixes. Now, even though... Even though I'm going for Phoenix production, I'm also gonna get a Robo. Honestly, because of Immortals. Oh, yeah, Immortals are just too strong. Yeah. Unless you're going up against pure, um... Unless... Oh, man, I floated a lot of middles. Unless you're going up against pure Ling, Immortals are good in all matchups. Wait, pure what? Pure Zergling. Oh. Which is which is quite rare. Okay, I'm gonna chrono my phoenixes, and I'm gonna start plus one air weapons. And once we have four phoenixes, once they once they link up, I'm gonna show you what they can do. So so the good thing about phoenix is that it gives you a an insane amount of map vision and map control. The bad news is that you're very high. Okay, so she has the phoenixes. See how fast they are? Like, I can just fly to the enemy base. Are there cannons? Oh, clever bastards. Use the lift. Kill four probes. And just get the heck out of here. <laughs> the lift doesn't use energy. It does, it does. But they have enough oh, how base. Much? 50 energy. Holy shit, that's a lot. Yeah, but they start with a decent amount of energy, so it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into double stargate, but I'm still going to get a bunch of gateways, and I'm going to get charge. The reason I'm getting charge, and I'm going to get a forge. The reason I'm getting charge is that um, this is where the zealot comes in. Tank. Yeah, so, so it's to help in the main fight. Just in case, you know, things go like really badly. Let's say the enemy attacks right now. Like, look at their army. They will probably be able to beat mine. There they are. Okay. So let's go for it for another run by. And we're out of here. So, so they're very, very, very good harass unit. Take the next base. Try and saturate the next middle line. Get plus one shields. Continue immortal production. Try to spend my chrono boost effectively. Upgrade complete. Teleport successful. Okay, how many phoenixes do I have? Seven, right? Eight. Okay. So once I reach like eleven phoenixes, I personally find that that's enough. Eleven water slot. Yeah, it's not that many. I also need to start getting shield batteries at some of my positions. Okay, I'm hot keying my phoenixes separately. Okay, wait, I made a mistake. I didn't, I didn't hot key my robo. Okay, hot, robo is hot keyed. Is the enemy still here? Okay, they've, oh, they've got high Templar and Archons. Wow. Archons can't attack up, right? Oh, Ar Archons can. So here. What they can? So just like that, I killed like 5 probes, and I'm gonna fly the main. Even with a cannon. Yeah, they are so hard to fight against during harassments. They can be. Okay. Now with that, now I'm gonna get a fleet beacon and start attacking towards ultimate air toss. But this is still a very, very risky strategy, because if the enemy knows you're doing this, and they know that you've invested so much into phoenixes, and you... They will just attack you. Yeah, they just attack me and I die. So... To make that as hard as possible, I'm going to get more gateways and I'm going to start using my mineral bank. I'm going to... I'm going to start doing what um, the pro players do. Okay, I got charged, that's good. I'm going to add on another two stargates. See, so these zealots here are just going to attack the middle line. At the same time, my uh, phoenixes are going to fly towards the natural. Okay, the timing is a bit off. I could have done this better. 
but ideally my phoenix hit here the same time that the zealots hit there. Oh, the entire base is, base is probes at, what, 9 probes down. Okay, then we still can go into the main and do this. See? And like the enemy can't mine because of this. So much supplies killed. Okay. Now I hotkey the rest of my units. My fleet beacon is done. Mothership on the way. Uh, next. Oh crap. I need more gas. I know I haven't saturated my next base. The Phoenix can attack Archons. No, no, no. No, they're firing at um at the Colossi. Cause the Colossi, remember, are so tall. Yeah, so this base is way oversaturated. Transfer over to the next base. If you see over here, warp in another bunch of zealots, attack the next base. Do not give the enemy a moment a moment of rest. Oh yeah, Phoenix is gonna attack as well. <sighs> Actually I should be using my Oracle more. Okay, let me show you what else the Oracle can do. Where is the enemy? Whoa, careful. Okay, so if I cast Revelation. Notice that I can now see the enemy army at will. Then I'm going to put a stasis trap into the natural. At the same time, I'm going to attack the, the third base down here. Then order a bunch of Tempest. Kill this probe on the way out. Take this gas. Put up more pylons. With all that extra money build shield batteries and cannons. Turn on the your immortals are purely for defensive purposes? Yes. Because I don't want to just throw away my immortals. They are too valuable to use in run buys. If that enemy army attacks me right now, I need some ground buffer. See. Well, wow, there's a lot of structures for defense. I've got the money for it. Okay, there goes the oracle that I wasn't microing properly. Take another base. Like, here's the thing. Once... Like, you see how much money I'm floating? Oh, I was floating. I must well put that to good use. I must as well start, like, uh, just taking every base on the map. Why? Because if the enemy attacks me, I've got enough bases that even if they destroy one, there's going to be another. Destroy that, there's still, there's still something to fall back on. The reason... You're almost maxed out on supply. Yeah, I'm actually not enough minerals. Okay, then I cancel this base first. So I've got more than enough. Open another group of zealots to attack. Oh, they're over there. Okay, gather all units. Okay, so here's the thing. I've bought myself enough time. Oh Jesus! I didn't even see those. What the heck? Okay, so here's the problem about the phoenixes. They're not that good in a straight up fight. Oh my god. Here they are. Oh, you saw them, okay. Yeah, I'm oh deliberately gonna fight a log here. There's gonna be a bit of lag. The carriers are gonna do their job. Can the mothership attack? Yes, not a lot, but enough. Okay, I'm gonna get the phoenixes to lift up the enemy immortals. Did you even take a single loss? Eh, uh, a bit. I, did, I don't see any void rays though. I thought I ordered some. Okay, so this is actually a slight... Okay, so here's the thing. Now that that attack is done, I can sack the immortals. I'm also gonna send a run by to go and... I'm gonna send the immortals to attack um, their base here. I'm sending a zealot run by down here. Okay, now is when you start building up a bank. The minerals have up and, gone. and what you need to do after that is you need to make sure you get your upgrades. Because, well, see, here's the thing, I'm maxed out. Well, no the other reason I'm doing this, honestly speaking, is to free up supply. And it's not uncommon when you reach, like, certain parts of the game that you see pro players, they'll just start throwing away workers. Serious? Yes. They just shoot their own workers. Yeah. Sad. Expendable. 
okay, so what I'm gonna do now... Okay, so here's the thing you should do when playing air toss. This is slightly more complicated, is that... You make sure that you don't max out. The reason being is you still want some space for warp-ins. So, like, I can still warp in these zealots, and they're gonna attack the third base. Once they attack the third base, the air force hits the... Where are my void rays? There they are. I think they're at home. Okay, the zealots hit this base, they're gonna kill workers. Then we move up the ramp. Actually, <laughs> mass produce carriers. Are they very tanky? Ah, the carrier. Okay, here's... The carriers are kinda tanky, but they have their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, uh, you notice that the carriers are actually firing something called interceptors? These little things? Yeah. Do they just seek out their own enemies or something? You can target fire it down. So for example, if I target fire, let's say, this assimilator, all of the interceptors will go after the assimilator. Oh my god. Oh, they just get more and more, the interceptors. Yeah, there's a limit. But here's the thing, if the interceptors are shot down, it takes time to rebuild. Yep, GG, okay with that. 